Anyone who has worked with child neglect will know that there isn't just one type of neglectful parenting style, that there are a range of different approaches to parenting that have the consequence of creating an environment where the child or young person is neglected. In the 1990s, Pat Crittenden tried to identify three styles that neglectful parents may exhibit. And the emphasis is on may. Not every parent will fall neatly into one of these categories. Since then, David Howe and myself, amongst other uh, researchers and writers, have explored these three styles in more detail. And what I'm intending to do in these three vlogs is think through the implications for children and families living with a parent who is exhibiting one of the three styles identified by Pat Crittenden. The three styles are disorganised neglect, emotional neglect and depressed passive physical neglect. So let's begin by thinking about the first one disorganised neglect. And disorganised neglect takes place when the parent or carer, often because of their own experiences of abuse and neglect as a child, has learnt that the only person who is going to meet their needs is themselves. That's the way that they have coped. So my needs first is what dominates the family environment and the approach to parenting. So what this means is children will experience inconsistency and lack of routine. The atmosphere within the home will be very much driven by the parents' mood at that particular point. So how does this manifest itself during lockdown? First of all, these parents are likely to be very inconsistent in terms of abiding by the rules of lockdown. They may be happy to be on their own with their children, but if they become bored or frustrated, then they may decide to invite someone else round to the, to the house. So social distancing, self-isolation may take second place to the focus on meeting their particular needs at that point and as a consequence because they're bringing other people into the family home then these children may be placed at risk of being infected by COVID. Everything that accompanies the lockdown like being unable to access shopping on demand, having to queue problems related to accessing benefits, food vouchers and so on will be seen as a frustration for these parents. They may become angry at the idea of having to queue to go into a shop. They'll become frustrated if they have to queue to talk to the benefits office about their benefits. In their exasperation, they may be putting children in a vulnerable situation by saying to the child, you go out, you get the shopping, I can't be bothered to do it. Standards of hygiene may fluctuate. Sometimes the parent may be really rigorous about hand washing and uh, so on. If at such a particular day they have particular concerns and anxieties that they may be uh, catching COVID and consequently the whole family has to stick to rigorous rules. Other days they may not be so anxious, they may be more lax. So the message given to children is hygiene, constant hygiene isn't important. They're also very much more likely to be focusing on their own fears and anxieties than those of their children. Everything will be about what does this mean to me? So 
if their benefits have been disrupted, if their jobs have gone, it will all be poor me. You help, you support me. An inability often to begin to think beyond that for the implications for others in the household. For a child, their experience of education is likely to have been erratic in normal circumstances. These are children whose attendance will be up and down and is likely to have brought the attention of um, the school to poor attendance ratings. Under lockdown, this is likely to be exacerbated. It may be that the parent wakes up in the morning and decides, actually, I'd like to get my child off to school today. They can go. The child then is confused when the following day the parent can't be bothered. And likewise, work that may be sent from the school may be approached with enthusiasm by the carer one day, but then dismissed the next day as, oh, I can't be bothered with that. The child might be encouraged to work one day, but if the parent wants a company the next, they may be told, no, no, it's more important that you talk to me. If they're meant to download work from the mother's phone, for example, the mother's needs may take priority over the children's need for education. So what does this mean for a child or young person brought up in a disorganised, neglectful household during this pandemic? The child may well mirror the parent's uh, behaviour and the parent's needs. My needs come first. And they may try and do that by bringing attention to themselves. Sometimes that may be positive, giving the mother positive messages or the father positive messages, trying to ingratiate themselves with the parent. When that doesn't work, they may go for other forms of attention-seeking behaviour to try and get their needs met. Notice me, I'm important. And this can result in a further neglect and indeed abuse if the parents get frustrated and angry with the way that the child or young person is behaving. It may well be that the child or young person is told, go on, get out, we've had enough of you today, we can't cope with you anymore. And they're left wandering the streets. For very young children, this can create real problems about being out and about with any lack of supervision. For older children, this is making them really vulnerable to criminal exploitation. Within the home, the parent or carer is likely to have a volatile relationship with their partners. One day it may be all love, life's a bed of roses with them, the next day, absolute hate. They can't stand them, they want them out of the door. And this can escalate to the child witnessing domestic violence, both physical and emotional forms of violence. If the parent or carer's uh, own parent should die, then what this is likely to bring to the fore is the parent's ambivalence about the death of that parent because they're likely to have had the same love-hate relationship with the parent as they exhibit in terms of relationships with their immediate uh, family. As a consequence, if the parent dies because of Covid, it may have been very quick, there may have been no opportunity to see the parent, they may not have been able to attend the funeral and it will all be about what does this mean for me how do I feel about it with little thought to how it may feel for the grandchildren who maybe had a very close relationships and were depended on the grandparent for support so what do these children need 
as we come out of lockdown. And there are three key things children need. They need consistency, routine and support. They need an opportunity to talk through their feelings, some understanding about the chaotic environment in which they have lived and the consequences that that has had on all the child's needs, educational, social care, emotional relationships and so on. It will take a time for these children to settle down to any kind of routine, for example, in schools, because they will be there used to almost doing as they please or responding to the parents' immediate demands. So a sense of routine in terms of getting up in the morning, getting dressed, washed, sitting down and doing some schoolwork will not have been available to them. So as we come down out of lockdown, what these children need can be summarised with notice me, pay me attention.